<laughs> for a player in esports. And he's still doing fantastic things, isn't he? He's a great player. And he is spawning in the top left over mana side. He's innovation. Honestly, if I leave my birthday banner up for too many more birthdays this month, I might be 29 soon to use EG, so... Catching <laughs> up. Bottom right hand side, her blue Zerg. He is Raynor. I also have to, I guess, account for the fact that if I was Korean, I'd actually be 30 in Korean years, so... Oh my god. Oof, oof, it's coming though. It's coming no matter like, you know, what part of the world you live, live in. Four more months for me, man. And then I'm, I'm just basically over the hill. I get to join all the other old commentators like Maynard and Tasteless. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, you're just gonna come, need to like, you know, <laughs> have an existential crisis right now. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna do both of those things. <laughs> Uh, well, usually recovering something that's uh, not too interesting, but innovation actually is going for uh, a very like weird, like it's scout, but he just like made sure to avoid the overlord. So he's going to try and build a bunker. Yeah, uh, that would be the immediate suggestion, but instead he just runs up and I don't know. Yeah, maybe. I guess so. <laughs> Yeah, I guess he is. He just waited for the, the right time to build it. There oh, we go. All right. There's really no other reason to avoid the Overlord. Um, yep. You don't get... Unless, I mean, I guess maybe if you sent the SCV out literally the fastest you could, you could try and deny the hatchery as a, as a Protoss would. But uh, Rainer actually, he did this versus Bunny. He drone scouted for barracks and then brought it home. And that might have been why that drone was being sent out too. So, of course, it sees the bunker. Wouldn't have been quite done before the hatchery had revealed it, but it would have been closer, a little more micro, and then maybe it actually does finish. In this case, not only does Innovation not get the bunker up, but the SCD couldn't block out the third, like it can do with the SCD scout. So not really much gained, and even the Reaper kind of takes a lot of damage without getting the Ling's low HP, the Drone's low HP, and that means the Reaper is... Typically going to struggle more to deny this creep tumor right now, and so Reynold puts it right down at the front, which is not oftentimes something you can do on Romanda's side because there's no ramp up into that natural, right? Or well, the ramp is a bit further away, so the Reaper doesn't have to go up a ramp to get vision. So yeah, that creep tumor just goes down more easily than expected, as uh, Reaper will just keep an eye out here. Third hatch is seen, and so he knows what's up. And we wait for really innovation. He goes three CC for now, but. Innovation oftentimes will be the play to obviously dictate how this game goes for the next level while even off a 3cc. Does he go for a Banshee at some point? Does that get aggressive? Is it just a safety Banshee? You know, what comes from three bases as well is uh, a big question mark here. So for Reynold, I guess we'll see if he wants to start a layout upgrades. It'll be interesting to see if he changes that style up based on the fact he's now playing a Korean Terran again. Yeah, the fact that he's facing Korean Terran on a on, you know, not favorable server for really either one. Although a bit more favorable for innovation on West. And then uh, also, you know, the map, the reason, the reason he changes things up. Once you get a lot of information, and the Overlord is close to seeing that it is a 1-1-1 one, one, one setup. It isn't really close to seeing that the third CC, but since, yeah, the Marine pops out so late, it should be able to see that as well. So that's full information. I mean, he might even see that the, it's a Viking popping instead of, I, I mean, the only other option would have been a Medivac, right? So, yeah, very good scouting. Yep. Uh, or a Liberator, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Does a Medivac not pop faster than a Viking anyway? Faster than no, faster than a Viking. It fast, pops faster than a Liberator. I guess you don't see I was, anything, so. <laughs> yeah, I was like, you didn't see anything anyways, but... Yeah, it yeah, is yeah, actually yeah, a Medivac after the Viking. That applies in some scenarios, but it absolutely doesn't apply in this one, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I mean, you kind of mentioned you're hinting at it, that, like, just because it's a third CC doesn't mean that it has to be just a, uh a mid-game oriented build. We can still have that Hellbat attack off of it. Hits later, but can still be a surprise. It can certainly still, uh, you know, even kill someone who's really playing quite greedy. Shouldn't kill Rainer in any situation, but this time around, he did not go for any safety bailing nest. And so that would be an opportunity to at least trade very well against a massive amount of links. Uh, and uh, instead, it's he's really not doing anything. He is actually just going to go above 60 drones. This is the sort of scenario where you do die as Reynold, actually. <laughs> right? Like, 
He's getting a little bit of supply block. The Lings are going to try and catch Hellions here. And oh, no, the Hellions. The last thing you want to do is lose your Hellions. But now the Lings are dead and you're going to morph in Hellbats. And then obviously now the Hellbats get healed up by the Medivac. And Raynor has nothing prepared for this. Even his Queens aren't really... Okay, there's five of them here now. Let's see what the Queens can do. I actually think the Ling damage is so important because those Hellbats are still hurting. And they just can't yeah. get as aggressive as they might have liked. Exactly. I mean, at most of them, an orange is really not what you want to have starting off your push. Because the queens are obviously, they've been notified. They're all together. They can start getting that little bit of damage they do. That adds up pretty quickly. And now it's, you know, twice as fast because everything was, was already injured. So they're doing their job, doing a little bit of damage and kiting. They uh, could go for the medevac, but a lot of times you do see the Zerg players actually just focus on the links around and then concaving their queens as opposed to sniping that first and foremost. We can see that it is going to work out well here. Saves all of the weak queens yeah. while cleaning this up almost entirely. And then deals with Liberator pretty quickly. Does lose a queen, but doesn't get so distracted he loses a bunch of drones. Yeah, these few rally out and take a bit of damage. This is, um... I want to say that this just wasn't good at all. Like, this feels like a scenario where Innovation should have done much better. But he really didn't do much at all. And it all comes down to those Lings just putting the damage on the Hellions because... Imagine even if the Hellions have a bit more HP, they can push toward the third base. And if they do that, they force a drone pull, most likely, just for safety's sake. Even that is just way more damage because in this case, the only drone pull he forces is with the Liberator. Imagine you got a drone pull initially, and now if those drones get back to mining, then the main base has to drone pull. That's just an even worse case scenario. So it really feels like uh, Innovation just did not achieve what he could have done there. And that's obviously great for Raynor because Innovation just committed to a Hellbat attack. Well, Raynor just droned up like he didn't care at all. So his economy is way better than it should have been during it all. And now he's going to have some money to spend. And as he just goes for the moment, just purely into Ling Bane. His main nest is still pretty late here. But uh, yeah, pure Ling Bane for the moment. We'll see what tech he adds on, if he adds on tech at any stage of this. I don't think he has to. I don't think he would really want to either. It is going to be an Aerox from Innovation, which uh, did not go well for here, Marine. But that was, that was two parts to it, really. One, the Aerox was scouted with enough time to really like, cons like consider what to do and think on it a little bit. And then two, there was a couple of changelings that saw the exact move out of the reinforcements. So that shouldn't happen here, at least not the, the second part. This Ling is about to see some pretty quick additional three barracks and got the information that Rainer was looking for. So while he does grab a Spire, he once again might just go ahead and not use it for quite some time, not until he actually mm -hmm. pushes off the first engagement. Which, um, it was a little scary, Wardy. That, that Baliness was quite late. It's difficult hooks, not even 30% done. <laughs> yeah. It's a scary point. And it's, uh, you just need that Bane speed, especially in a world where it's Widow Mines and not tanks, I feel. Uh, just being able to actually roll forward with the Banes and do a lot with them would help. I feel like that Widow Mine should have been killed, but he backed away an awkward moment. Now letting the Queens take some damage. You're going to be seeing the Ling Bane chasing in through the top side. Widow Mines don't do that well. They hit a lot of the bio units. And the Marines try and get into Medivacs, but there just wasn't that many left. The random SCV gets saved as well. And now Innovation will continue to rally out. I like this little mind of minerals that he did so he can rally out more easily. That's actually really smart because that's the only entrance to his base. And it's good enough for him to run out easily. It's also easy enough for him to block if Raynor tries to run in. It's not a common place for Raynor to try and run in from either, right? Because especially if Innovation's rallying out of there. It just sets him up really well against the potential run buys. And right now, Raynor not even going to try those. He's kind of trying to scramble together a defense. He's on his way to 2-2. He would get that in his favor, but down 40, almost 50. Army supply here. It's hurting a little bit as he rolls through and does feel like he gets a good initial trade with Banelings once more. I do still like that Rainer. I mean, losing the Queens would have just been a mistake. You know, too many things happening at once, a little bit of pain. But I do like that he took the engagement when he did. It bought him some extra time. It bought him some extra creep spread as well that's only recently being cleaned up. And not even entirely, actually. An active creep team over to the left side. So, and that was important. His Baneling speed was not done. And now he finally has this 2-2 finishing as well. A good 30 seconds fast in innovation. So what he needs to focus on now is getting enough Banelings and setting up a surround or maybe even trying to get these reinforcements. Once again, he does that as it was a single rally at a time, which is towards a couple Banelings and a pop the Widow Mines. Uh, that's one reach, but didn't really get a whole lot. And it does feel like innovation has been cut off. Man, this is like no man's plan right now for the Marines. They got to pick up and go home. Hey, that's the good news. Rainer had not yet built, but he's getting to it now. I think it well handled overall by Reno as he just crashed and he gets rid uh, of the Widow Mines and now he's just going to get rid of all the reinforcing units and the Marines dropping down. Uh, that might have just been a deciding moment or two as 
Yeah, you can't really attack in very easily, but there's the 16 20. Like last time against Urine, it was 17 meters. This time it's 16 meters. Yeah, those are the meters that are going to just change up the pace of this game in Reynor's favor because now he can chase back Medivax. He's just going to have a very good time shutting down these attempted attacks of innovation, I'm sure. I guess innovation is going to try one more, like almost you know, close to maxed out push, 180, something like that. We saw here Marine try and add on a fourth CC, especially I think once he realized how Rainer was going to play out the defense by just you know, moving his bases elsewhere. But it, it didn't work, and that's not just because the game is already not going in here Marine's favor, but also that expanding from this position with such few like factories, you're on one, is, is quite difficult. The meat account gets more out of control, the upgrades get more out of control. And uh, if the creep was cleaned up and you're kind of digging into the economy a little bit, there's definitely more of a question there. If there's still a creep spread, if you're not even on their side of the map, then there's really no question. The 8-Rax is eventually going to fizzle out. Yep. Yeah, 8-Rax is, uh, well, it's meant to create an advantage for you that you then just continue to push, but the advantage was just never there really for innovation. I like this drop on the main, though. I mean, this is the kind of thing you can maybe do to... Bring yourself back into it. It's going to maybe open the chance on the right-hand side of the map at the same time. Reynor was about to lose the spawning pool as he is trying to come in with a little bit of a flank here. Well, he actually almost overcommits oh. units here. He has too many units. Spawning pool is saved. He defends the drop in the main base. Innovations losing their CVs, and that will be game for Reynor to take the first map of the best three series. Just kind of began with the Hellbat shutdown, right? The Hellbat shutdown happened, and then the next step of this was just Raynor would continue to push through, have a good time, and the 8 rack just never really got going. It kind of felt like a game where Innovation was like, I'm going to do a three base, how about attack into an 8 racks? That's what I'm doing. And uh, after what was kind of a disastrous how about attack, it might have actually been better to try and change things up. You know, it's always a, a tough decision for the, the people to make. Is sometimes just staying the course is fine. It is good enough. And they've, they've made mistakes that you don't even see, for instance, having later bane lane speed. But in that case, it was already a bad start into an 8 racks that was scouted again fairly quickly. So Rainer could really have the mental preparation, not invest into 7 meters and then go, oh my god, I, I'm, I'm not prepared. So um, definitely was seeing a, a better opportunity if he had just kept the momentum. Now we move on to Death Aura, which is where Hearing did try his 8 racks. I can't, uh, I can't see Innovation doing it twice in a row or, uh, or like ever again in this series, actually. I think... Rainer has proven that he scouts it too fast and deals with it too well. Yeah, no, it's... Uh, Rainer just sort of says no to that sort of style, right? It's just... It's very apparent. He has a very kind of well set out response. You just don't build the muters for a while. You make sure you get it under control. Then you build your muters a bit later. And then, you know, by that point, what's innovation meant to do? Because he's also not dealing with muters because he's not expecting them because they're so late. And then you don't have turrets up, so they do even more damage than you might usually do. Everything kind of falls apart. So what, what do you do then as innovation? I think you maybe don't even go 3cc. I know it's death aura for map 2, which is very nice for 3cc, but maybe you just go like double gas. You get something aggressive early. Just try and take the lead early in the game. Try and run from there and try maybe from that point to then go do something. I mean, if you have a successful start, maybe you could go Arax, right? If you do a bit of damage initially, then you have that initial momentum to build into the aggression with. So... Maybe something along those lines. It just feels really tough when you don't do anything early at the moment against Reynor. Yeah, it does. But then I guess with that in mind, you know, Bunny was able to do well enough yeah. without, uh, you know, very, very strong openers. Kind of strong in that, you know, I guess they uh, they forced a reaction from Reynor with a lair for an overseer and then later upgrades. But yeah, definitely not like a huge start. So I, I think innovation would be more so the type of player just be like, okay, I tried the 8-Rax, you know, I tried the momentum builder that is the hell about attack with the 8-Rax. I'm going to try, you know, more of a, of a macro game. But it is intimidating. And while innovation has his fair share of, of victories in that type of game, I feel like he also has his fair share of just absolutely brutal losses. <laughs> it's like, oh no, what were, what were you doing? So I don't know where his head is at, but it is his last life here in this tournament. Down one against Rainer in the top left Red Terran, he is Kaizy Gaming's innovation. Taking on in the bottom right hand side, can he be our first Zerg into the playoffs? It's Raynor. There's a couple weird things that happened in this group today. One was that we were shocked the two non Koreans were in the loser side of the group. And then, uh, 
too, is that the Zergs haven't made it through yet. It's not really what you're... Uh, if you were, like, back in 2016, let's say, you know, the non-Korean thing would just be like, why, why are you guys surprised? And then if you were in 20, what, 19, 2020, you'd be like, the Zergs haven't made it through yet? What's going on? <laughs> yeah. But it's been a bit of a day of, uh, of, of weirdness. I mean, it was really one guy just surprising us that made it feel like such a weird day, but I, I guess there's also a couple of base race TBTs. Yeah, I mean, like, to be fair, it's like in a group of four, everything can get thrown off by just one one match, right? Because actually, I really do feel like, I know Bunny getting out in first place is like, oh my god, but I feel like that's more because he beat Raynor than anything else. I really do feel like Bunny in the TVT, I know Innovation's got a good record against him, Sarah, but I feel like that's not as surprising. That, to me, is more acceptable. But the fact he beat Raynor initially was like, oh, wow. Right, so that first match really kind of set the tone for this day, maybe being a bit weird overall. Hey, I mean, all the games are really kind of back and forth, right, in those first few matches. So, well, in the Raynor games, or in the Bunny games, at least. So it wasn't like it was like a clean sweep either. Like, he really had to fight for it. He did, yeah. I mean, overall, so looking a better player, obviously he won. But yeah, it was not like an easy, easy 2-0 against every opponent. Well, we have ourselves the uh, normal openers for TVZ. We're just waiting kind of on like innovation, getting that second gas or not. So we can kind of start talking maybe to your point about maybe you have to be aggressive against this guy. But I was uh, I was kind of like, you know, uh, what's the word? I was like not certain. I was not with you while you were talking about it just because last game he did do the Hellbat attack when it seemed like the best opportunity and it didn't work. And either, okay, it doesn't work is going through your head or you're like, well, now he will get a Bailey Mist. Because I, I played that that part. I played the, uh, the I can be aggressive hand. So it's not a second gas. It is a third CC. Could still do an armory attack off of it, but it was uh, really did not go well last game. You do it again. I don't know about that. I feel uh, it, it's one of those things, right? It's like, why did it fail? And I, the reason it failed is because Raynal was too good with his lings and you put your Hellions in a bad position initially. Like, I had the actual Hellbat part of it would have done fantastic if it were not for that, because Reynold was being way too greedy to realistically hold without taking damage. So it was absolutely you know, possible to make something happen there, but I think now you do kind of just second guess yourself, slash, like I said, you go back into it again, because what if this time you just expect it and then you attack him into something that doesn't work, and then what, you lose the series because you tried two Hellbat attacks that didn't work out? That's like a pretty horrible feeling, I'm sure, so... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It, it's tough, though, because if that's kind of how you feel is your best way to set up against Reynold, then maybe you still have to just go for it and you just have to make it work better, you know, hide it better, sell it as something else. The little things, right, at this top level of play are the things that make these attacks successful or not successful. But you just add on a second factory. That That's wild enough to be a difference. Yeah. Uh, this Marine actually missing an opportunity to, to add on damage the Overlord. I hope that doesn't mean that it scouts the second factory. The Viking also not getting there as quick as possible. Uh, second factory is way far back, so the Overlord will not be seeing that. That is great news for innovation. Okay, so not the Hellbot attack, which, yeah, yeah, we were talking about how like it did have this kind of obvious like flaw that shouldn't happen, so that's why it didn't go so well. But in general, do you want to lose two Hellbot attacks back to back and that's why you lose? Not so much, but if you have it on a second factory, and you hide it successfully, then this this should do damage, right? This should do something. It should do something. There's the blue flame sign, medevac coming up, more Hellions on the way. The thing is, I mean, it's still a lair into Bane Nest, so it's not like you're playing Nevo upgrades or anything like that. I don't know, maybe I'm being pessimistic, but, <laughs> but I just I just feel like Reynal is going to pull off one of those defenses for some reason. Something's just in my mind and just feels like he's going to find a way. Is Hellion's initially taking some damage, but they do get out alive, and there's still a chance for them to go home, repair, and then come back onto the map. Ooh, I was just going to say, I kind of wish that they would go back home and clear out any lings that could possibly exist, because if you see two more Hellions, maybe that's not a big deal, but if you saw four more, then it's kind of like, okay, they're making too many Hellions not to do something. As I say that, Rainer builds a bunch of drones, but he does also build a bunch of uh, Banelings, so I think he is still thinking more so about Hellbats, of which case six Banelings would be enough to force them to spread or just get good connections, and then everything else could clean them up. It's different if it's like blue flame Hellions plus Hellbats. We got ourselves a little bit of a drop going on right now. And then just the sheer number, because it's not one factory, it is in fact two. Uh, Rainer 
He's got some indication that something's coming, but he doesn't actually know the full extent of it. He's actually not prepared at all in the main base, thinking it was going to yep. be a direct attack. Yeah, now his Banes go running up into the main, and, well, the Hellbats do not really split or anything, so they are going to be held off in the main. Six drones go down, so they got a good start. Now we're going to be seeing the Viking there is getting cleaned up a little bit. Hellions out the front will not do much for the Queens there. But I felt like Innovation had a way better opportunity to do more than what he's done right now. Um, I felt like, I mean, six drones feels like Reynolds getting off lightly, and he'd start nine drones when those Hellions were about to run into the main, so... He kind of already offset the difference by, you know, taking some damage, but redrawing it immediately. And, and then just defending well enough that it was only six workers. Now Queens are in a little bit of trouble as they're off creep and slow to move. But he will transfuse and save the first one and... Or save the second one, sorry. And one more help that's in the main base. We'll see what they can do. Problem is just the Lings can't really fight this at all, right? As the medevac goes down, he will just commit with the Lings. It's going to be a little bit messy, but it is what it is. But the third base now being ripped to shreds. Okay, Ray, you know, just can't have enough units out in the right places, it seems. Yeah, that's the roasty toasty that we were expecting from the Blue Flame Hellions. I was I was waiting and I was like, oh, he's just like, he's not going to try. It seems really bizarre, but he does finally get in there and kill 14 drones. I mean, Rainer, you you mentioned it was kind of just droning through a lot of this. So he still had a decent drone count, but that is also why he didn't have anything to stop the Hellions. With that many Hellions, not like Lings would have really done the job anyways. But uh, one thing that we haven't mentioned is that Innovation has messed up his macro here. I say that too many times about this guy, but he accidentally started Magkill Accelerator twice, actually. The first time around with the Blue Flame, and the second time was supposed to be Drilling Claws. So now he has Cyclone upgrades. No Cyclones. Yeah. He's, uh... <laughs> yeah, I was wondering about that, because I saw it on the way. I didn't get a chance to mention it with the Hellions coming through, but... Yeah, I kind of thought maybe there's going to be some weird combination, but yeah, it is just a straight up mistake because now the Widow Mines show up and slowly burrowing, and now he's going to start drilling close, realizing his mistake. You know, it's one thing I feel like we can say maybe a bit about Innovation a day in general has just been it's not been a perfect set of games, right? He has been making errors which are unforced and necessary, and those are the sort of things you just don't expect Innovation. You know, every now and then everyone does it, right? But today it really seems like a bit of an off day for Innovation because he has made those little mistakes multiple times over now. Yeah. And I had no doubt that someone's like, well, it's late in Korea. Well, we're talking like compared to innovations and in, like other season finals as well, where it's oh, also yeah, fairly late. Exactly, right. <laughs> innovation's actually one of the better players for playing late at night, right? He, He's the guy that goes all the way through to like a stay-at-home Story Cup finals at like 8 a.m. and still looks fantastic, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. I agree with you. It's just a little bit off. But he does at least realize his mistake. And, and even without Drilling Claws, I'd say it, it would have done damage, guaranteed. Just especially in that third base, they would have gotten a faster shot off on the, the drones not being pulled. But it still did a fair amount. And uh, it's possible that with Drilling Claws, it would have done the same amount, actually. So it's not the worst thing. It's a waste of resources. And Asian's got his four bases up. Drilling Claws will finally finish. And he is moving on to just a really sturdy bio army with Thors, with Blue Flame Hellbats. The Blue Flame doesn't really matter so much in these large scale engagements, honestly. They, they kind of just are the, the buffer for the Banelings. But in that case, they are actually still pretty good. They can soak up a decent amount of Banelings. That would be preferable to the Marines getting hit. That comes a push from Innovation. Obviously with the, uh, yeah, with the ability to soak a little bit here, it could be some scary attacks actually that build up. He is going to be under attack with the Mutas coming up the other side. He has got turrets. Obviously, a lot of this really relies on, well, first couple of Wooden Mine shots were pretty nice there. A lot of this relies on how quickly you pull SCVs to repair. That was no SCVs brought to repair, but Innovation is also pushing down the right side. So Reno needs to find a way to fight this. He sends just a few Banes in initially and kind of gets himself right in the center of that army before connecting. But even still, there's a, a lot of stuff here to work through. And right now, Reno just doesn't have the numbers. Necessarily just dive right on in, but that was a better set of balance. Now Ling's coming through too. Widow Mine's being set off without too much effect, and I mean, pretty much the best defense Reynold could have found. He's really going to make this work. Now the Mutas returned home. As the Mutas, once again, I feel like this is a trend for today from Reynold's side. Mutas just dying in kind of like ineffective fights when he's looking elsewhere. He's lost nine Mutas already, which considering the Mutas have only just started moving around, it's kind of a lot of them. Oh yeah, that's, that's usually really bad. But I, and it, it is bad, not usually, it is bad. But I do want to commend Rainer's control of that fight, though, with that in mind, how he seemed 
playing against the ping here with those Widow Mines to be involved. It is difficult, but the way that he controlled that fight deserves applause. The way that he would pull back the Banelings when he felt like they wouldn't do as much anymore. The Queen's doing in minimal damage, but over time actually helping out against some of those straggler units. It was, it was well done. He's going to look for a better engagement here on Creep. Innovation not paying attention for a hot second means that all of his Marines get hit by the Banelings. Only the Thors left over. And the mutas, oh, the mutas are actually right there. That's a weak bit of back. Oh, oh, no. oh, I mean, the Thors were low HP as well, right? So easy pickings for the mutalists here. They knew which ones to target. And that's a nice full cleanup for Raynor. No, I mean, I was about to say, so much of Innovation's army supply, it's like he feels like he has so much, but it is just a lot in medivacs. And so when there's nothing else underneath those medivacs, what does that matter? Here come the reinforcements, and that's obviously a big wave of reinforcements. It's a whole new army. So I'll see what he can do now. But honestly, if he keeps taking fights on the creep spread like this, I don't know when this is ever going to start going well for him. Reynolds on five bases and 98 drones. I know Innovation is just casually on four bases, moving to five bases himself. This is all how kind of happened very passively as, you know, we've had a bit of a scrappy game. But uh, it does feel like this is the comfort zone area of Reynolds now, where realistically, if he can try and stop this fifth base from getting up and mine properly, he can really start to take control of the game, right? So let's see. The next couple of fights will be very important to let Reynolds know what he can do offensively and see what innovation can do to maybe slow down the Zerg as well. He would love to get rid of a base or two. Not going to be good enough on the offensive or on the defensive. Loses his command center, loses the attack, the bottom left, innovation. Still keeping a decent supply. But not really mm -hmm. finding a lot of successes for like, I guess, the pacing of this game. Also, okay, oh. missile turret. Barely going to be paired at the last second. And the help of the Widow Mine against some of these mutas means that, yeah, Raynor cannot tear this down. But the game is still pretty even. Raynor still has a lot of creep thread to work with. All those bases that you just mentioned and almost, not quite there, but almost 100 drones. Real problem for Raynor in this game. The biggest problem has been the fact that he's lost so many mutas. Yeah, I was going to say, I actually think that uh, turret was meant to die there, but because the Widow Mine's got like a couple kills, it was like, oh, all of a sudden the, the turret actually just survives and it completely changes what that defense looks like. We're going to see a couple of Banes already clean up some of the Widow Mines. Obviously, anytime Widow Mines don't get a chance to fire is a win from Reynolds' point of view. So as he sets up again, I mean, he is maxed out. It's just a question of can he clean up well enough and then get himself enough time to rebuild and to remax. Make use of his economy. Big counterattack from Rain already killing a lot of SCVs and clearing out that mineral line on the other side. So, and finding this success with just Lings as well means that he doesn't have a lack of units back at home. It's not like he used a lot of Banes to make this attack happen. So, looking very good for Rain on that side. He has had to give up a base on the right. That's a little bit scary, but of course, Innovation's pushing on creep, which gives the Banes the best possible chance to move on through to help clean up. That army's pretty chalky, though. The Marauder is getting very, very low, but actually living are to be healed up by the massive amount of medivacs that you pointed out earlier. They're up to 15 medivacs. They're healing everything up so darn fast that, well, yes, it's amazing that Banelings are being able to left at home and that the Lings still did so much uh, run by damage. They aren't actually killing very much. <laughs> They're depleting energy on the medivacs, which is not exactly what you want. Maybe finally enough Banelings to crash into this. No, they go over to the left side as the Mutas handle what is mostly Marauders. But things are looking very scrappy. Innovation clearly thinking he had a chance there, even on creep, is forced to retreat at least a little bit. But Rainer, most of his supply earned is in workers. He's got 57 yep. army supply against 98, and that 90 army supply is almost entirely over here. Yeah. But again, again, it's almost entirely Marauders. This is kind of comical. Y y right? I mean, it's like Marauders are just not good against mutas, believe it or not, everyone. So <laughs> <laughs> they're just kind of... They're just kind of surviving and taking down whatever bases they can, but they're kind of being stopped before they actually finish up any bases. So this is getting a little bit better. I mean, again, what's the Marine count out? It's extremely low. The Medivacs are out of energy as well, by the way. So there's basically no healing on this army anymore. Reynolds is going to pull a few drones. Looks like they're just going elsewhere, not going to be pulled into the fight. And we're back to only having Marauders remaining. And again, <laughs> they're trying to target down bases that are low HP, but not quite full. Maybe the one on the right side here does go down in the end. But Raynor comes out of this with the supply lead. He still has bases mining on that right-hand side. That's something Innovation never went for. All of these fights, by the way, happen with 3-3 for Innovation against Raynor's 2-2. And that's a pretty big factor as well. Just the fact that Raynor's never been able to get off of Lairtag. And that's not surprising with the way that this game has gone. Scrappy game. You have to put all your resources into mauling Bay Muta. One of the problems with this style is when you fall behind, you're kind of stuck on it. So... Wow, this was wild. And what's really crazy to me now is that obviously there was a lot of Marauders, almost too many of them before, as oh, Widow Mines again connecting well. 
There was a lot of Marauders before. Now there's a lot of Marines, but that actually means that Bailing should do even better than previously, right? So mm -hmm. maybe that's a compositional thing that Reynold can work to his advantage now. He sees that fifth base man, and it's already a plant tree, so he can't really stop it with the Lings. And he'll just have to pull back and morph in Banes to help against this Marine force. Yeah, these meters did a very important job, though, of, of trying to track the army and buy time because the Bailing Nests have been killed, so it only just completed. And that means that he has a lot of bangs to put into 27 bailings, which you're absolutely right. You want to balance, and unfortunately, maybe twice now. We'll see what happens to the Mass Marine, but there could be an imbalance for both of these games, uh, both of these fights, rather. The Marauders <laughs> not be able to tackle any mutas, and the Marines, well, they need splash. They need those Widowmines to actually get some pretty good hits, or they will be destroyed by the bailing counts. So we got reinforcements being caught, actually. Pretty nicely done. Widowmines not quite close enough to help out, means the Marines are going to fall. Rainer's lost so many mutas in this game, but he is back up to 24, but a drop to the bottom left actually going to really dig into Rainer's economy, which has already hurt from the earlier engagements, but now is really struggling at 55 workers. That's not really where you want to be with Ling, Bane, Ling, Muta. I really felt like the mutas were starting to create some opportunities and to get something done, but you just can't afford to lose the bottom left base, right? I mean, especially the 24 drones on it. That's just so much money that it, even just replacing drones is expensive in that scenario, right? So it really hurts. Now the mutas again hit by Thors. The Marines are doing well. The mutas are doing their best to kind of buy time, and they actually are going to find a cut down the bottom left to escape away. So they'll get out of there, but innovation is still maxed out. And it's just a matter of when this army comes across the map, what the heck is Renor going to do to shut it down? Well, probably not very much in all honesty. No, no. I mean, he's still at the bottom left mining this entire time. Maybe he's also at a pretty you know, decent supply. Bailing's on creep, certainly. If you're at 180, is actually you know pretty okay. But down 50 supply, I don't know about that one. He's going to have to look yeah. for some amazing connections. Rainer's just lost so many mutas this game, man. He's lost 53 mutas. There's so yep. many points where if he had a higher muta count, it would have gone so much better for him. The harassment, but also even cleaning up all those marauders would have happened much faster. And they still are something that he is depending on to bring back this game, but innovation is not letting them find any movement. Yeah, the, the middle is one of the big issues, just the fact that, again, remember one time he was dealing with an attack and he lost nine mutas. That was the start of just never keeping the muta count high enough. And as soon as the mutas got high now, look how much trouble they've caused, right? It's the reason he's still in the game despite being so far back. If he had that or some extent of that earlier, I mean, who knows what he could have done in this game, but... Yeah, if you invest in meters, they need to do work and they need to be kept alive and trade effectively, and they've just not done it uh, this time <laughs> around. And Well, I mean, Reynolds is kind of dancing here trying to figure out what fight he wants to take. The Banes are going to roll in, and it's a lot of Banes, but there's a lot of Banes that are going to be difficult to replace. Like, yeah, they might trade out, but it's an evasion that's more easily going to replace because he doesn't have to, you know... Reynolds has to remake Lings, then he has to morph in Banes. All of that is actually just like quite an expense right now with the position he's in. That was an okay fight if it wasn't for the economical situation. But that said, the economical situation is getting a bit different than just 30 seconds ago. Two bases are mining again as the middle left was taken and Innovation just didn't, didn't realize it. So yeah. That's been mining away for a little bit, but he once again loses a lot of mutas recently replacing them. They have to actually join up together. And he, of course, doesn't have much creep spread. To depend on to defend these bases so it's it's definitely still a game that looks like innovation is gonna be able to win just it's a matter of time the rainer's really trying to hold on yeah he's gonna try and set reinforcements as banes will do the job on the ground initially i want to say but then there's actually the thors are the problem right it's like the banes can get through the marines but then there's nothing to really stop the thors and the marauders these chunkier units that are just a little bit harder to get rid of that reynolds army is just not well designed to shut that down so yeah it's uh, the problem he's running into here is Innovation is really barely mining at all, by the way. Like, this base is mining out. Obviously, the right base is the one position that's really been consistent for Innovation. And Reynolds going to strike, and he's going to stop the mine there for a few moments again. What do these Banelings do? They crash in for the Marines. They go for a few more, but they run out of numbers. And then the Thors are just so tanky, you just can't really work your way through those. So, as Innovation doesn't even lose that many SCVs over here. The Plantry takes damage, but survives. It looks as though Innovation is... Uh, Continue to control, just has the medevac so you can lift the units up. The fours are going to get dragged around different places as well. And this should be a, an exit from the game at some point soon from Reynold, but an incredible effort to stay in it as long as he has done. Yeah, absolutely. 
couple of Thors being the biggest problem. They just, they can't be killed. SCDs actually go into their deaths for the most part. Nope, actually, Marines are there. The mutas die. And that might cause the tap out. If innovation floods into the third base, Rainer is not going to get an easy 2-0. He's going to have to play game three. I don't think this would have been an easy 2-0 even if he won this game. That was <laughs> this game was well, well fought. As you see, a few extra banes. He's really still trying to just clean this up anything he can. He knew he had innovation somewhat on the ropes in terms of economy. So maybe if he cleaned out, out that army, there was hope, but obviously not the case in the end. And innovation ties us up to mean we get one more map here today in Group C. Now it's going to be a, a fun one, I do believe. We've seen some great stuff from both players. Innovation not, you know, just having kind of an unfortunate opener that time around gave us one of the best games on Death Aura. And I'm excited to see what our final map of the day will give us right after the break. The final game of the day, game three of Innovation versus Rain to decide who joins Bunny to make it out of Group C. A bit of a surprising day, but one that has given us a lot of really great games. And the last one uh, did not let us down. That was a great showing of late game TVZ, a great showing of how Rainer is capable of bringing back these types of games. And now we move into Pillars of Gold. I'm getting like deja vu. Is this what happened with Rainer versus Bunny? <laughs> Yeah, it, we ended up on Pillars of Gold right for the third map, and uh, well, it didn't go very well for Raynor there. Hopefully, he can maybe turn it around. We'll start off in the top right side, though, with the Red Terran player. His innovation. Yeah, 
In the bottom left for Team Clash, he is Rainer. Did not go well for Bunny, or sorry, did not go for Rainer against Bunny. Um, you brought it up, and it really it showed and ended up happening that this is another map where Bunny is like multitasking, not lose momentum style would work out. And you're right about that; it did work out. So we got a two one over Rainer. But funnily enough, it's actually Innovation winning the Death Aura game, where Bunny actually lost out because it was maybe too expansive; he couldn't really keep up the momentum. Plus, he chose a very uh, greedy build. But definitely uh, just showcasing that they're very different players, Bunny and Innovation, and that Rainer you know, maybe has the better chance against this guy to make it through as we expected him to, even more than we expected Innovation to. I think most people expected both of them, sure, but if you had to choose only one before the day started, I feel like most people would have chose Rainer. Yeah, no, I, I think so too. I, I think I would still choose Reno as well. I feel like overall, he's been a bit stronger. I mean, remember last game, he was really caught off by Blue Flame Hellions, and the preparation for that was minimal. And he st I mean, we still got such a long game out of it, and Reno was kind of trailing the entire time. But it always felt as though there was like a bit of hope for him at least. And there's definitely some moments where I really felt as though he might kind of break Innovation down, but Innovation just bounced back with a little bit too much army supply. Yeah, it's uh, very crazy to lose Rain already, though, because I think a lot of people just expect this to become the the Rain or Clem and Sarrel show versus the Koreans in the playoffs, right? But <laughs> yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. He could definitely be thrown off again by by whatever else other build innovation has in store. That's what we're going to be looking at. He does add on a second gas here, so not a quick three CC build. We're already changing it up yet again. It would be crazy not to have Rainer in those playoffs, or just the fact that like so many Terran have gotten through. I remember like, I mean, Terrans always did well, like the beginning of expansions. Well, Legacy of the Void with the armor ultras was a little bit questionable, but anyways, <laughs> I but feel like yeah, sorry, yeah. they did well, right? In the tournaments. Yep. Um, not to, to mention which ones were won, but anyways, the, uh, and then the, um, they do well, I feel like the beginning of like maps, Right, the seasons because they like, find those tank positions and then everyone yeah. else figures them out and they're like, Oh, never mind. Okay, just kidding. And then I feel like sometimes they do well at the beginning of the years. There's like trends here <laughs> for Terran victories, <laughs> and maybe innovation is going to get blessed by the beginning of the year. Uh, trend and uh, well, he definitely is changing things up here to get that start. That is not a swapped over factory, yes. Huh. So, this is the build that I think your Marine was doing against Raynor. And so I, I believe somebody corrected me at some point and said it was maybe a Beyond build or so that mm -hmm, used it yeah. Asus once or twice. Um, which is amazing because I feel like I cast over that and, and I don't remember. So <laughs> too much StarCraft. <laughs> but um, yeah, so Marines, you, you basically go for like an eight Marine drop. You get two Hellions and then you swap on the factory onto the reactor, basically. And then you do make Hellions. Um, I mean, it's just like a different way of applying pressure, really. So you still have a couple of Hellions, which are good defensively. Then you go into a few more and... You can, you can get a lot done. I do feel as though it gets you to a point where once the Zerg kind of knows what's happening though, it can become that a little bit easier to defend anyway. You can even see Reno just investing in his spine, so he's a little bit worried that this actually turns into something with like Hellbats or so. Even the spine just zones out a certain area, and that can help, although if the Hellions run by the third and then the Marines drop in the main, that spine's not exactly going to help at all. It's in the natural, which does kind of feel like an anti-Hellbat thing. Um... It would absolutely yep. help against the Marines, but that's weird position. Lings do manage to break through into the main base, causing a big distraction. Probably won't get too many SCVs, but also means that Innovation isn't really controlling the medevac, so... Controls it well enough to pick up, but doesn't get any damage there. Might just have to settle with a couple of Creep Tumors. Yep. He can't, if he has a scan. Oh, he can't do it anymore. Yeah, he gets forced to lift up. He's on his way to the Raven, which is the other kind of next step of this, which is pretty much like they all, like the Terrans always go into this Raven after this open end. I don't really know why. Like, you know, if you build a Raven with this, I mean, I guess it's just the way the gas lines up and everything, but it, it kind of feels like if you had a Raven with this, I don't know what it does necessarily that a Raven doesn't do if you just open like Hellions. Uh, I don't know if you got an opinion on this one, but like, I feel like 
this raven still just pops out. It's not like marines help the raven that much. I don't know. I feel like it's because you have two sets of armies that it's, yeah. it's a bit more worth it than, than the one Hellion push with a Raven that is controlled very easily, like it's pushed away easily enough. And while this may be pushed away easily enough, it's just like it's the idea that maybe you're not paying attention to one one side where the Raven actually is. In this case, innovation joins up together. So it's to your point, it's kind of the same same idea, but it does clear up some creep spread. Yeah, no, he cleans up a bit of creep, but it's like Reno will plays that fairly quickly. He has creep out the right side that's looking good, and he's just on his way to fourth base, a lair, and 1-1 one, one upgrades nice and quickly. So the upgrade's pretty much going to match that of innovation. And say overall, just uh, not really either player taking too much of a lead. Innovation never actually went into the extra Hellions that I kind of thought he would, by the way. So he was very quick to set up into extra tech labs, etc. And that also means his barracks built right onto that reactor as well. So marine production starts nice and early. And we'll see if maybe that first push of innovation has anything, uh, has any real power behind it. I guess if you get combat shields, then 1-1 one, one finishing at the same time, then there's absolutely possibility with a couple tanks to take some positions here on those of gold. Certainly is. Honestly, this this type of build, you know, I, I definitely saw it from Beyond first as well. It just it feels like Bion is going with the the unexpected will win me this or will win me momentum when I'm the game, but it'll get things started very well. So he'll set up for like, you know, this type of opener and then he'll have five, six different branches out of it. It's hard to always call specifically. Especially when it's not even Beyond. It's innovation taking some of that that Beyond inspiration and, and working with it. So he clears up a couple of creep tumors, but they're placed down pretty quickly. So once again, forced to clear up creep tumors, but this is a pretty good run by some Hellings left behind. Are they enough to actually handle everything? The Ling AI not doing so, so much wonders here. Oh, the Baylings are slow, but on creep, just enough to push those Marines away. Yep, Marines getting pushed back. Eight SCVs go down. I mean, you kind of need to do something here, isn't it? If you've just lost some SCVs, to not get anything done would be a real shame. And he is going to do well enough initially to get back on top of this hatch. Bane speed is really just the missing factor of this right now. If you have Bane speed, you roll at those Marines way more easily. As Ling set up, flank or counterattack catch is, is both possible, or just counterattacking yourself. He's going to morph some Banes off to the side. First Hydra's on the way in as the Queen's take a more aggressive stance. Looks like this is just going to be a flank in. Multiple auto turrets go down. That's one of the big things about the Raven. It takes away a lot of the Ling attention here and allows the Marines to do very well behind it. And that does actually start off to be, you know, does start off in that sort of regard. Marines are going to continue pushing through with no AoE support now. So these Banes are going to be difficult to clear up. And that's why we see the lift and not quite a leave, but a lift and move into the main base. Sport Crawler is fairly well positioned to help out, and it's not too far away, so Rainer's going to respond quickly, but this could be just back and forth, back and forth. Actually, Queen's up on the low ground, snipe one of the, uh, help snipe one of the medivacs. There you go. And that is a, an odd rally right there, but he is rallying to the middle of the map, so the tanks are planning on sieging up. Rainer is having to quickly respond to different places, and it's not going perfectly for him. He loses those Queens. He does jump on top of one of the tanks, and the Banelings roll on through with the help of just a little bit of creep spread to once again push those Marines back. That was looking a little bit scary, but Rainer did have enough units, even though they were temporarily out of position to hold. Thankshot did well on top of those Banelings, they able to jump on that very quickly as you do see oh marines in the center of the map gonna get rid of a few more lings as well so lings going down all over the place two two is on the way up plus one vehicle weapons coming in as well yeah okay i mean innovation is able to get himself out of some trickier situations rain always kind of holding on i like where it's going for no he starts the second factory in a fourth cc and i think that's very good news because this attack was not going to continue forever so He's looking to the future here, as Reno is as well. Infestation pit on the way, that opens up that hive tech. And obviously, I think we kind of have a, a pretty good idea of where this is headed once that hive tech is coming into place, EG. And it kind of looks to be lurkers. Oh my god. Oh no! Oh, yikes. <laughs> Why is the army there? Just because, uh, yeah. Yeah, Rainer why is it was... all creep like? <laughs> yeah, that was actually just a weird one. Maybe just hoping to find armies and, and kind of get to the, uh... Get the siege, you know, by time. Oh, no cancel no on that, too. Hey, <laughs> medivac dies. Medivac. Oh my god. <laughs> All of a sudden, things everything go goes wrong. wrong. In 20 seconds. Yeah, that's amazing. That's uh, well, amazing for Rainer Innovation. It's hard not to feel defeated after the se a sequence of events that just happened there. It's actually not totally game ending, but it, it is going from like, a, oh, I'm feeling pretty good about this game to, wow, this game is stupid and I hate it. Um, and he can't tap out. He's going to have 2 2 at least finish up. 
quite far ahead actually of Rainer, but since Rainer is playing a different style, he's actually able to afford going into a hive. That 3-3 three, three brutalness that we saw last game won't exist here. Yep. As you see the uh, Lurky Den coming up about halfway done, Hive's about halfway done, so all of that coming through. The problem is now for Innovation, you lose any opportunity of shutting this down before it's set up, right? So now if you're going to make something happen here, it has to be versus the Lurkers, basically, and that's just... Well, that's just tough. He's going to move out with this, but I wonder if it's almost too soon. You know what? It might not be simply for the fact that Raynor is kind of stacking money again, right? Like, he's almost like, oh, yeah, I've got a bit of time just to stack money, get ready to go straight to Lurkers. And in fact, maybe that costs for a little bit because now Innovation's attack looks a lot better than I thought it would. Well, if you remember the very first game of the day, Bunny was able to find Raynor just on the on the cost of getting to those Lurkers and was able to, to get a base plus the Lurkers plus, like, drones. Not quite as severe here, but without the upgrades on those lurkers, even though eight of them will actually finish and complete, it could still be a difficult hold for Rainer. He's going to feel a lot more confident once he has the range, and then, then the burrow. Vipers as well coming out here are going to have to actually get energy first. It doesn't take too long, but this is innovation moving into the fifth or the sixth. Very little creeps spread to help out. It's going to siege up. He's going to take the engagements. Rainer, nope. They're actually just going to back away. I don't want that. Oh, a few Banes go down as they start to roll on through. Marines do well to clean those up. Hatchery will fall. Okay, I mean, this is the base you can get, though, here as Innovation, right? Because the other bases are all behind the Lurkers. So, okay, you get what you can. Good start. There's more to be done. He's going to jump in the main base. Lurkers are not moving at all already. So Innovation going to get position on the main. And Raynor, I mean, doesn't even do that well on this counterattack, honestly. Five SCVs is not amazing. You look at him losing 17 drones. Now about to lose the Hive. You know what falls from the hive? Maybe that Lurgan down the, oh, the Viper show up. We're going to parasite a bomb medivax. And these Marines just kind of sit here and fight. Finally, a load up. And he is just going to get out of there. Innovation really, really running Reno into the ground at the moment. Yeah, it was an awfully late response. I mean, I understand the Lurkers wouldn't have got there in time anyways, but it just, it felt like overall it was a late response. Maybe Mike his lings for a second too long. So loses the Hive, so that's any Vipers. They're not going to be able to be replaced uh, anytime soon. Loses the Lurker again without that finishing second upgrade. So at least he has the range, but he doesn't have the ability to move his Lurkers or respond uh, very quickly at all, which again means responding to the main base a bit too late to say maybe this time the bailing nest could go down. Everything that's important to Rainer's composition has fallen or is about to fall. Base is just starting to fall as well. Innovation really taking the momentum and running with it is in every single portion of this map. And his tanks, by the way, aren't even involved in many of these fights. So they're just chilling alive off the left, ready to build up with a main attack at some point. Uh, as Scan goes down, Marines have to load back into the Medivac here, as we'll see. Uh, Marines off to the right side doing pretty well as also. Lings and Hyde just continue to run through, and I'm just going to see Reynolds supply still dropping. Just the fact that his bases are in so much trouble, right, is one of the big issues here, and he's going to maybe even shut down some mining via the high ground position of this base on that bottom right side. The innovation still has a ton of tanks on the far left that he just hasn't moved for three or four minutes at this stage, as the Vipers will just double up duck. Tanks get brought in. It does weaken this position enough to probably clean up. This innovation will just continue pushing on the left. That base is going to be his next target, saying, hey, get on top of this one, clean that out. Still on his way back to a little den, still waiting for the hive so he can go to adapt the talons. As right now, the base on the left will be given up, and Raynal really going to start struggling to mine now. He really has to approach this as a low economy situation. That's exactly what it is, which means you can't lose your army. You can't really trade, even when it seems like it might be a favorable one. You still have to kind of err on the side of caution and just and just say, no, I'm going to I'm going to hold and be patient, which is obviously going to give innovation a lot of room, especially since he can still abuse this main base, although maybe not as much as he's hoping for. I don't know about unloading there. The Lurker is quicker to respond this time around. Viper is in position as well. Innovation gonna lose potentially a lot of medifacts. That parasitic bomb is very effective. Most wow. of them go down. On the right side, we have another push from Innovation, however, and there are a lot less lurkers on this side, but no scan going down as he's trying to escape oh. and is unable to do so. So a couple of lurkers actually take down most of the bio on the right side. Although maybe not enough. Rainer might not be able to hold this base. It's already low. The drones would also be killed on top of it. And Innovation, okay, one error in the main base does not lose him this game. He is still winning. He is still up 40 supply. He is indeed. It's just that main, that drop in the main was just like you say, why did he need to unload? He really did not. I think the idea was to go to the natural. And then when he unloaded, it was just so late. He never got a chance to siege tanks. 
And it doesn't even matter. He just uses it as a way to set up on the right side. He kills the base off there. I mean, you really saw just how lackluster the Hydras are if they're the only units around. You know, they only have a plus one attack upgrade on the Hydras. They're obviously not on plus three power pace either. So they die kind of fast. They're obviously already flimsy units. Innovation is going to stem up here. These lurkers on their own. I mean, the real story at the moment is just a lack of support for anything that Reynolds trying to work with. You know, if these Lurkers have units in front of them, they're much more difficult to kill as right now. These lanes get cleaned up pretty quickly, but there's maybe just a little bit too much here. Of course, Innovation is now rallying reinforcements across the map. Reynolds can't even get complete cleanups, and if he's not going to clean up everything, he's going to remain to be in a lot of trouble. Rainer is on the brink of defeat. He is going to try and hold on with Lurker Viper, but not even canceling a base when he desperately needs the money. It's not a good sign here. We could have yet another Terran advance onto the round of eight and still no Zerg. Rainer also almost guaranteed to lose that top spot in the points unless Cyril also has a weirdly bad day tomorrow. I guess that could happen. This might be the last stand. Innovation's bio is going to be torn to shreds thanks to the number of lurkers that are available, but that's not even all of Innovation's army, I don't think. He still has so much producing back at home. Yeah, even if this gets cleaned out, there's another army already in production. There's another army already on the third base, ready to move out. So he just has what feels like for Reno endless amounts of units. And Reno is mining, what, the bottom right side? Natural on the third base are well on the way to being mined out, so his economy is really quite shallow compared to what he would like it to be and unfortunately I mean now innovation is split up in some different directions it's going to be difficult to hold the lurkers when the Terran's attacking you from two sides and then a couple of lurkers here the hatchery nearly went down the bio actually just gives up the position and goes to the back of the mineral line to trade out and in the end lifts up and loses one full medevac but innovation now the other army shows up and again a scan here push forward there's only three lurkers that should be engageable there's just no bailings or anything to support this. It's just going to be Lings and Hydras running through. And Innovation has too much Raynor. A game that I feel like did start kind of somewhat in his favor. Falls a 